magic. 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 What's up, my people? It's Ari, Ari the foodie, Ari love, whatever you want to call me by i've got my friend kid cali with me on the line today and we are here to talk music so first of all kid cali let the people know where you're from and why you decided to call yourself kid cali Gotcha. Well, what up, world? You know the face, you know the vibe. It's Kid Cali. Um, I'm from California. I stay in Raleigh, North Carolina now. And pretty much the reason why I went with Kid Cali as the name, um, I'm from California, was born there. And, you know, even though I've moved around and I live here, I just always feel like, you know, home is, is, is Cali. So I had to go by Kid Cali. That's awesome. And then also what I forgot to mention was that you go by actually Kid Cali MDMG. So let the people know what does the MDMG stand for? Gotcha. So, yeah, the whole name is Kid Cali MDMG. Um, Really, the name is Kid Cali, but the MDMG pretty much stands for money doesn't mean greatness. Love it. And why did you decide to like kind of add that to your name and like just to just for it to represent that money doesn't mean greatness like what do you think the importance of that is got you so long story short how it really came upon um actually i went by kid cali in the beginning and um the mdmg stood for million dollar movement group which you know back in the day me and my friends you know trying to do this you know put everybody on pretty much you know as a team that's what i had so once we got bigger boom you know i got me in the team and kind of a label thing but as time started going on um i guess there was another kid cali out in california and i guess he ended up dying and then you know as i started getting bigger a lot of my music started crossing onto his platform his music was crossing onto my my platform so it was like cool i need something you know i had to change my name so i didn't want to drop the mdmg so you know i sat down and started thinking and i came up with money doesn't mean greatness due to the simple fact that you know a lot of people are out here chasing what they're chasing or doing what they're doing but sometimes i feel like they're doing it for the wrong reason you know they're doing it for the money so they can you know have money which i completely understand But, you know, my whole philosophy behind it is is that you just chase at what you're trying to do, what you're good at. You know, that's what makes you great and everything else will follow behind it. That's awesome. And so how did you get your start in the industry? Like when um, do you remember your first show? Uh, Yeah, I actually do. I don't remember the exact date, but um, I definitely do remember the first show. (laughs) nice were you nervous or did it kind of just come naturally no definitely was nervous but um surprisingly you know a lot of people were like yo like we love the music when it's live because you know we get to see you and it's you know a different side so you know when i perform actually a lot of people have been like yo actually like when you perform a whole lot more you know listening to the song which is still dope but you know how you get that that performance feel from an artist and and a lot of people are like yo we love when you perform so it was definitely nerve-wracking but hey you got to get through it absolutely so tell us about your creative process like when it comes to writing and recording music what does that look like I love this question, especially like, you know, when people are asking it, um, how I come up with the music. Honestly, um, it's really what I'm feeling, you know, like I can be sitting there thinking if I'm in a down mood, a sad mood, you know, frustrated, you know, I kind of try to find a beat. And this is the creativity part is that, you know, I just go through beats and the beat actually tells me what to talk about. And when I find that right beat to where it's just like, boom, I'm listening to it, you know, back to back to back to back, then I know I found, you know, the beat to write to. And as I'm listening to it, it's just like words just start kind of connecting, you know, to the beat. And then I go from there and I'm like, oh man, I got to go upstairs and start writing. And then I just start writing. Okay. That makes sense. That's a vibe. Um, and so that just kind of, 
flows into my next question. So your song Love Me with Rocky Fresh has received a lot of attention. Um, can you tell us about the inspiration behind that track and how the collaboration came about? Yeah. Um, so shout out to my guy Rocky Fresh. Uh, definitely appreciate my man for, you know, hopping on that and really, you know, helping me shine with that track. But pretty much how it came about, um, which is kind of crazy because way back in the day, I'd say maybe like five, six years ago, I reached out to Rocky Fresh and, you know, obviously it didn't happen. So um, I happened to come up with the track and, you know, we follow each other on IG. Um, I saw that he was in the studio and, you know, I ended up DMing him and I was like, yo, I got a few tracks, bro, like, you know, that I think is super dope that you could hop on i was like i reached out years ago huge fan loved the music felt like we kind of had like a similar style and surprisingly enough um my man reached reached back out hit me and was like yo go ahead send them through boom i sent him about two or three you know memos to listen to and boom uh he picked love me and actually i already had love me done it was actually a complete song i was actually getting ready to go to the studio and he picked that one so i end up taking the first verse off and you know he ended up hopping on the first verse and that's how that song came upon and the cool thing about it i won't say too much on it but we got some more things that are in the works that's coming so like i said we got we got more work coming Okay, cool. I'm really excited about that because Love Me is fire. Like, I feel like you guys really had good chemistry on that. You know how sometimes it will sound like when a rapper has a feature with another artist, it kind of sounds just like thrown together. I feel like your song with you and uh, Rocky Fresh, it just sounds real cohesive, like as if you guys were both in the studio together. And I'm not sure if you guys were in the studio together, but it definitely sounds like it. Uh, We were, but it's funny that you say that because a lot of people and, you know, blog sites and you know, people that have heard it, they're like, yo, for a song, you know, because Rocky Fresh, I would say, is probably my first biggest feature that, like, stands out next to a couple of other people that I've worked with, but I would definitely give Rocky Fresh that top spot. But, um, you know, for me working with, you know, an artist that's been in the industry for years, you know, to collaborate, you know, that was what a lot of people said. They were like, you know, your guys' style merged perfectly and what you guys did for that track. And to be truthfully honest, that was what, you know, brought that track. I feel like the energy and the life because it didn't sound like it was like pieced together. It just sounded like, yo, we were in the studio. We figured out an idea and a subject. Boom, we went in there and we recorded. And that's why... I I loved working with Rocky Fresh and why I reached out because, like I said, we kind of do have a similar kind of style and it executed perfect. Absolutely. And I love that you, you know, decided to take another chance by reaching out to him again, even though, you know, you said you had reached out to Rocky Fresh a while back. Um, So I think that that's like good advice to the listeners out there is just to keep pushing. Don't give up. Even when you think maybe someone might not read your message or ignore you or whatever the case may be. It's just the fact that you went out there and tried again, you know? Yep. Um, can't stop. I mean, you know, from way back then when I did reach out, you know, I was definitely a smaller artist at the time. So, you know, I didn't take it as any disrespect. You know, I didn't take it as any wrong way. You know, he's a well-established artist at the time that I did reach out. So, you know, him responding, you know, that was that was already expected. I expected that. But, you know, throughout those years, I continue to grind, continue to work on my craft, continue to build, continue to grow. And, you know, I reach back out. And now you look at my page now, if you even if he did look at it back then and wasn't interested. But now you look at it, it's kind of hard to be like, okay, great. Well, this, you know, from six years ago till now, my man's still running. But now he's on this platform. Cool. Let me let me put a little bit of time and see if this is worth my time, because this industry you know, I'm learning a lot and it's, it's, it's not just about, you know, Oh, Hey man, you know, can we do a track or reaching out into someone's DM? You know, you got to have that work. And 
that consistency and and just that drive so when someone does come to your page that you might have reached out two years ago well now they're looking at it and they see because you never know like it's always those people that you least expected that's looking at your page but are so that's so true and then speaking you know of you know just being consistent and you know doors opening for you with that uh you had the opportunity to freestyle for the head of a and r willie joe of generation now um how did that experience shape your approach to making music well first off um want to give a big shout out to my man jamal slash magic you know on ig um without him that wouldn't have even came you know to light so you know i'm definitely thankful and blessed that you know he put that opportunity in front of me but that boils back down to that hard work and consistency um you know you got to show people that what they do for you is worth their time and if you're not willing to put that work in then no one else is going to put work in for you so the simple fact that you know i ran into him started putting a lot of things in front of him cool he's telling me to move left i'm moving left he's saying go right i'm going right you know over time he's like cool this artist is actually listening to what i'm telling him to do and he's putting that work in so it was just one of those things that cool man i see you working i feel like this is a super opportunity for you and i can't even explain how exciting you know just to be in front of him and big shout out to you know willie joe and generation now because that was a huge experience in itself oh yes i bet and, and shout out to magic's the man he he's the man he he got it um and and i love that you know you guys uh work well as a team together you know and, and that you see that it takes a team to work together so that's awesome and um you know you i like to describe your music as chill hop um so not just hip-hop it's like chill hop because it's a vibe in my opinion so if you guys haven't heard Callie's music just yet please go to his instagram which uh there's a link in his bio uh and you can hear you know his catalog and you'll see what i'm talking about okay so uh, based on your songs like love me and top down and money and a thing how do you balance staying true to your sound while also keeping it fresh and innovative well it's funny that you said like you know the music's kind of like a chill hop or you know it's a vibe because that's what my whole music is about like you know I, that's what i want it to be um i want it to be a vibe where it's something different and i feel like that's why my music has kind of stood out because it's not like everything in the industry. Um, one thing is that I stay away from the trend. You know, I don't try to be like the trend. Yeah, I have a couple of songs that, you know, are industry type or, you know, trendy type because you have to give people what they want as well. But I feel like overall, what people are truly trying to see in an artist is how well do you stick to being yourself in your music and you know the artists that i listen to like j cole that's my dog a1 day one um you know meek uh kendrick logic big sean you know those are the type of people that you know i get compared to sir um jid you know people that put out good music and just over the years i've always focused on just being true to what i've gone through of course yes it's a little, not saying super elaborated but it's like you know some of the things are a little bit elaborated so you know the listener can put themselves in you know in in the shoes at that time so they can kind of feel how i feel but i've just always learned is is just stick true to what i'm feeling and i write about what i'm actually going through because still at the end of the day you can listen to all the trap music that's out there, all the stuff that's going on. But when you're really going through something, having a bad day or you're, you know, you're thinking you throw on that real music that you can vibe out to. And that's what I mean. Oh, absolutely. So basically, you guys, Callie knows how to think outside the box. Basically, 
he he does not go by you know everyone's beat of their drum he goes by his own beat of his own drum and i love that and also uh those artists that you mentioned who are phenomenal i definitely would say you guys uh who are new listeners to kid cali that if you you know have an appreciation for j cole kendrick logic even like currency you would really feel kid cali he's he's really dope and um just so moving on what was that oh yes of course of course yes um and yeah you are like super talented and i'm just i'm grateful to you know know you and and watch you grow as an artist and just definitely looking forward to you know everything that you have going forward um and you released you released uh, about several projects over the years is there a particular album or single that holds a special place in your heart and if so why is that um, well, I mean, I've definitely, like I said, over the years, I would say project wise, FNTS two, which was my last EP, which, um, is from nothing to something Two, is, I would probably say like my best body of work when it comes to writing exactly what I was feeling going through, because that was a, a rough time and it felt good to be able to translate it into, you know, the music side and the listeners feel it. But I would, it's kind of hard, um, you know, when it comes to being like, this is my best song. You know, I, I know a lot of people are out here like, you know, this is the best basketball player or the best this or best that. But it's like, I feel like, why do you have to have one of the best? You know, I feel like I've had, you know, multiple best songs that are my top five best songs, which would be, you know, Numb. You know, Ghost is another one. Smell of Fate. You know, to me, I feel like all of those, and, you know, I can give you a couple more, you know, that they all have something special to them. It's, it's nothing to where I'm like, you know what, this song does better than this one. And it's hard, you know, for me to be like, yeah, this is my best one. I feel like I have multiple best songs. And that's just my opinion when it comes to it, because I feel like if I try to give one song all the credit, it's like, well, you know, here it is. I'm writing two, three other songs, and I'm like, yo, the style, the flow, the vibe, it, it, it just keeps growing. It just keeps getting better and better. So it's like, you know, three months ago, I'm like, this was the best one, and then here it is six months down the line. I'm like, nah, this is the best one right here. So, you know, yeah, I just love the craft, and, and, and I just love the music. Oh, absolutely. Hats off uh, to you for being able to, you know, just... Uh, choose what you're going to put out. Um, I, I feel like it can be kind of hard at times, just like when you you feel like, oh man, this song is a vibe. Oh wait, this song is a vibe. So I I probably would have like decision fatigue with that. <laughs> so that that's really cool that you're able to kind of just like take a moment and really think strategically like, okay, I'm going to put this song out. And uh, your social media presence is very active and engaging. So how important is it for artists to maintain a strong online presence and how do you approach interacting with your fans on social media? Um, well, I, I, I can't even lie. I'm like the last two months I haven't posted anything, which is horrible. But that's because, you know, I've got a lot of stuff building up. But um, the thing about it is, is that cool if you're going to take a little break, you know, from actually posting, which, like I said, I don't advise. So don't think that I'm like, hey, you know, take a break. But, you know, if you do take a small little break, how, you know, I'm doing, make sure that you have content ready to drop when you do get back on, which here shortly I will be dropping a whole bunch of content, you know, flooding, you know, my IG, new post, a lot of things are coming. But, you know, I stay active with my fans, you know, even when I'm posting, you know, my IG stories. So even though I'm still not physically posting, but, you know, I'm still posting IG stories when, you know, they reply to them, they like them, you know, I'm always sending them love, hey, new singles coming out, 
da 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 what is it something that I can do? You know, sometimes I ask, you know, what's something that, you know, you might want to hear. So I've gotten great ideas, you know, just asking my fans, like, you know, what are you been going through, you know, or what's going on in your life that you're willing to share that, you know, can help me think outside the box and write something for people to connect to and you know that's pretty much what i do um you know stay posting what you're doing if you're in the studio post what you're doing you're shooting videos post what you're doing you know photo shoot post what you're doing um just stay active and and just continue to give people good content stay away from posting too much of the same content because then you know it starts to get boring you know to your fans your followers you know keep giving them new content you know when you're posting that's great advice. Advice. I absolutely agree with you, and I am definitely in the same boat. I took a real long break from posting on social media, but I'm back at it um, and ready to yes. go, fired up. Um, and you know, Kelly, I appreciate that the way you reach out to people. Um, I appreciate the way you reach out to people because some people will spam you, um, which I don't think is probably the best thing i feel like as long as you know you're posting your content and i follow you it it if you're posting it consistently i'm pretty sure i'm gonna see it on your timeline and i show you know i show love i show my respects but some people they will like go to your dm and just like constantly like send you all these you know songs or all these things that they you could have already seen you know on their timeline so i i really appreciate that you don't go overboard with everything and <laughs> you just yeah you definitely and i'm, I'm kind of glad you brought that up because you know i didn't really speak on that but like yeah definitely stay away from you know sending people you know uh, the same exact thing you know in dms or like tagging you know 50 posts you know with the same thing because you know not to jump too far into it but you know i've learned a lot more about you know how ig works the algorithm and stuff like that and over time you know that starts to one it makes you look spammy two you really do start to bug people like when people see it they'll see it and that's why like you just said, you know, if you're posting constantly, then eventually you will see it. Like, cool, if I post a flyer of a song, great. I don't expect everybody to see the flyer because you might not see it. But then guess what? Then I post a flyer with emotion, you know, emotion with a song playing. Like, you know, you got to give people more than just one thing. And especially, like you said, going through and like spamming them with what you're doing because... Like, I get that all the time, and it's just like, eventually, the person's either going to unfollow you, or they're just going to want to block you, because I have no problem, I'll block you in a heartbeat. <laughs> y'all heard that. <laughs> Kelly got no like, problem blocking y'all. He will block you real <laughs> quick, and so will I, because I, I feel you. Um, and for the last question that I have for today is, um, what can fans expect from your music in the future? And what are your plans for the coming year? What's on Callie's calendar? Okay. Well, um, pretty much for the rest of the year, um, can't really speak, you know, too far out, which is kind of great to say, you know, with everything that I've been doing and as much work as that I've put into this, you know, to finally say that I'm getting to a point to where I'm busy and I don't know what six months is going to look, you know, from now, I do know it's going to be super active music wise. You ain't even got to worry about that. Getting music, like I said, all year. Um, I will drop a couple things. Um, there's going to be a new EP coming, a new series from the FNTS2. It is not going to be another from something to nothing. So, you know, I'm not going to drop the name yet, but new EP coming out. Um, like I said, you know, new single coming out with Rocky Fresh here soon um also i guess i'll go ahead and let the fans know me and mecca you know we got something coming out mecca lux from generation now with willie joe's artist that he has hey. um, 
Yes, yes. Uh, also, you know, shout out to Ryan from Ballin' for Peace. Um, here April 5th, I'm going to the State Farm Arena doing a halftime show during the game. Um, shout out to my guy Reno as well. He'll be out there, you know, on the court doing his thing. Nine-year-old uh, kid out of Atlanta that's coming up. Big shout out to him. Um, you know, I got a lot of videos coming. And just like I said, you know, just work that's all i can really say just work you know the ig tap in follow you know the face you know the vibe man We're getting this work wait 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 give the people one more time your handles for ig or and everything else that you're on because i really want you know our listeners to go out and find you okay so just give it to us one more time because i know it but not everyone listening knows it <laughs> I got you. I got you. So all social media is anywhere you need to find me. Spotify, Apple Music, IG. Like I said, all social media, music platforms. It is at Kid Cali MDMG. That is K I D C A L I M D M G. All right. Yes. And before we go, yes. Uh, you did mention some people just now, Ryan Hicks from Ballin' for Peace, Reno Money. So shout out to you guys. You guys are awesome. Definitely, definitely will be hitting y'all up too for the next interviews and episodes because, you know, we got to definitely hear how they think outside the box. You guys will not want to miss that. Uh, but thank you again, Kid Cali. It was a pleasure speaking with you. You're always thinking outside the box and I love it. Until next time, everybody, just keep thinking outside the box, okay? I'll see y'all later.